board met tonight in executive session. We're now ready to go ahead with the public portion of our meeting. Uh, we have something very special here tonight. As you can see, uh, off to my left is our band and our band director, Dr. Gage. Um, we are going to um, follow our whole agenda, but before we follow our whole agenda, uh, the band is the top item on our agenda. And so I will uh, turn it over to Dr. Gage. Who's actually turning it over to me. Oh, who's <laughs> it over to you? Thank you, Dr. Gage. I appreciate that. Uh, the high school marching band competed in MetLife Stadium on Saturday, November 6th at the U.S. Band's National Championships as part of the most competitive open class division within the largest band circuit in America. While the competition was fierce, the top three bands scored within fractions of a point of each other out of a total of 100 points. Glenridge High School prevailed and won the coveted Group 1 National Championship. <laughs> Our students gave the best performance of the year and outscored bands from schools as much as four or five times larger than Glen Ridge High School. The marching band was presented with a championship trophy and banner by the executive director of U.S. Bands and by a sergeant from the president's own Marine Corps Band. That trophy and banner, plus the national award for best music, were brought back to Glen Ridge and are all on display at this meeting tonight. For the band and color guard members who make up the high school marching band, MetLife represented the final performance of the season that included four home football games and seven competitions. The band showed steady improvement over the course of the fall and saw their dedication and tenacity rewarded at MetLife on November 6th. Our band had earned national awards for best visual and best music in session in seasons recently passed, but this is the first championship banner brought home from the Meadowlands by the marching band since the year 2000, and is only the sixth in school history. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce drum majors Erica Duckett and Anna Sullivan, members of the senior class, who will introduce the marching band at this time. Hello, um, I'm Anna Sullivan. I'm one of the drum majors. And I'm Erica Duckett. I'm also one of the drum majors. Um, so, and our show is called Caravan, A Journey Through Big Band Jazz, um, basically where we go through the history of jazz with six songs, which are... Um, we start with um, Tuning Up by, um, by <laughs> Toshiko Akiyoshi. Then we do a song by Count Basie called... Um, sorry do a song by Count Basie called One O'Clock Jump. Then we do a Benny Goodman song called Sing Sing Sing, um, a Glenn Miller song called In the Mood, a song um, by Duke Ellington, a song by Ella Fitzgerald called Caravan, and a song by Yoko Kano in the seatbelts called Tank. Thank you um, and enjoy.
It was quite evident why they're national champions. Congratulations and thank you. Band members, I have just one thing to say and that's we need you here for every board meeting. <laughs> thank you, you so much nice. for coming tonight. And I know many of you are here with the band, as it were. Uh, we love it when people stay for our whole meeting, but um, if you have other obligations, this is a convenient time to, uh, to go meet those obligations. Okay, it's, it's hard to top that uh, in any kind of meeting, but we will, uh, we will go ahead. Uh, we did have written communications, uh, quite a few written communications, and um, bear with me while I find my list of written communications. Um, since our last meeting, which was October 25th, we've heard from a number of people on the subject of our DEI initiatives. Uh, including the um, equity audit. So I will just uh, read off the names and um, many of them were on the same topic. So I will make that clear. I have a couple of um, things that I will read during the public comment period, but let's get started. Um, we have heard from Debbie Mann. Uh, this is all on the topic of in support of our DEI initiatives from Debbie Manns from Sarah McGrath, from Leanne Tullison, from Neha Shah, from Christina Carbonell, from Sarah D'Angelo, from Kristen Carl, from Adam Keith, who also was in support of our COVID protocols, including masking, from Talia Schaffer, from Lavi Raghavan, uh, also um, uh, both in support of our COVID protocols uh, and um, from Mark Robertson, who also asked that we, when we have people testify before us, that we ask if they have children in the school. Most people who testify before us deliver that information without being asked. Uh, also from Marianne Tandy, again, uh, in support of the DEI initiatives. From David Taylor, from Laura Van Bloem, uh, from Philip Johnson, uh, two from Philip Johnson, who asked that the documents that uh, were uh, part of the meeting uh, introduced by some of our speakers at the last meeting um, be, uh, be provided, which they were. Um, we also, uh, going on from Stephanie Lee in support of our DEI initiative, uh, Ellen Rothschild also in support, Kendra Poster in support of the DEI initiative and the COVID protocols, Frank Fleischman, uh, Linella Gavin, uh, Bernice Bonnet in support of DEI and the COVID protocols, Jane Francisco and Colin Faulkner also in support of the DEI, pro, um, DEI initiatives, uh, Lisa Anderson uh, in support of DEI and COVID protocols, 
Jennifer Hondrew Celestin in support of DEI, Robin and Ross Fields in support of DEI, uh, all the following in support of DEI, Lauren Talbot, Diane Shaming or Shaming, I apologize if I've mispronounced, Karen McGinn, Cynthia Garcia, uh, and then we had another communication from Olivia Celestin and a group of Glen Ridge High School students on the subject of the uh, change in schedule and the change in lunch times. And uh, Mr. Phillips has addressed that and will continue to address that uh, with Mr. Lawler at the high school. Um, so that was uh, all of the public communication. And thank you to everybody uh, with every viewpoint who, who took the time to write. I think I have responded to, all of them have been acknowledged by Mrs. Murphy. I believe that I have responded to all of them. If I have missed anyone, let me know um, it was not uh, deliberate. Uh, the, the President's report, uh, I want to draw your attention to the item on the agenda announcing the retirement of Lillian Sergides. Lillian Sergides is a teacher at the high school, but to just call her a teacher at the high school is to uh, give her very, very much less than she deserves. She has been with us since 1987, teaching uh, world languages. She is just a treasure in the school and has affected now more than a generation of students. And as with all of our experienced teachers, you wish them well in, your reti in their retirement, but it is just so hard to say goodbye to such a terrific teacher. So we will have lots of time before the end of the year to celebrate um, Ms. Sergidi's career with us, but uh, it is with uh, some amount of regret that we accept her retirement tonight. I also want to remember Jim O'Brien, James O'Brien, who was a board member, uh, I think for one or two terms, uh, during the early years of, of my time on the board. Jim was a parent. He was a substance abuse counselor. Uh, and his, his depth of understanding of that was by his own admission based on his own experience. He was a consummate community volunteer and that includes his Board of Ed service, but that was only a small part of what he contributed to Glen Ridge. And he was a man of enormous faith and that endured his commitment to community service and his faith endured through just numerous serious illnesses and, and setbacks in his life. Uh, he, he died um, November 4th. And so I wish that all of you, he had a lovely family, his wife Sherry and three children, and I hope that all of you will remember them in your thoughts. And now uh, it is time for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Betsy. I'm going to start off by recognizing two students. I hope they're both here. It's hard to tell in the crowd, but uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the Ridgewood Avenue Upstander Program, and if Wyeth and Sebastian are here, if they could come up front, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Ridgewood Avenue Upstander Program of the uh, recognized students each month. Teachers at each grade level uh, recognize a student who exemplifies characteristics that include courage, action, assertiveness, compassion, and or leadership. All nominees get recognized. They receive a positive email uh, home from the administration and get a, to tie a ribbon on the wreath of kindness, which is located on Dr. Donovan's door. The upstander of the month is chosen by a committee and is recognized in front of their homeroom. Their photo is taken and hung on the Ridgewood Avenue upstander of the month bulletin board in the cafeteria, and they receive a stop the Bo stop the bullion slash New Jersey um, New York Jets T-shirt, along with two tickets to a home Jets game. Uh, Sebastian was named uh, the upstander of the month for September. And Sebastian's in third grade. And Wyeth was named Upstander of the Month in October, and Wyeth is, Wyeth is in sixth grade. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. 
I also like to uh, recognize Lillian Sergides. Um, I, I taught with uh, Mrs. Sergides. Uh, she has a rare dual certification in French and Spanish. So she was very valuable to us and uh, afforded us a lot of flexibility when it came to scheduling. Uh, she spent part of her career in Glen Ridge going back and forth between Ridgewood Avenue and the high school where she was teaching um, Ridgewood Avenue school, stu school students um, an introduction to, to both of those languages at the time. She's passionate, energetic. Uh, she's a terrific educator. Uh, I always enjoyed uh, spending time with her, and I wish her a, a m the most memorable final school year of her career. I do want to um, just touch base on the pandemic. Um, as you see, uh, we continue to experience uh, relatively good numbers. We did have a little increase in quarantines, but that was related to uh, travel during the teachers' convention. And I want to remind individuals that uh, the vaccine is now available uh, for five to 11 year olds if interested. Tonight, I want to talk about the curriculum process. It was brought up a little bit at the last Board of Ed meeting. Um, the, the curriculum process really, it, there's three aspects to the student learning uh, component. We, we look at curriculum instruction and assessment and we work those three components together to make sure that our students are learning uh, as much as possible and in the best format possible. Uh, when it comes to the curriculum, we work on a five-year cycle. So every content area is um, re revised and rewritten at that time when their, their cycle uh, period is up. Currently, uh, this year, it's the mathematics program uh, uh, content area, subject area. Um, but just because we work on a five-year cycle does not mean at any time we can go back and re review and revise curriculums as needed. And sometimes we're adding courses to a, a content area that needs to be included. Um, we construct a district curriculum review committee and we get representatives from each building at each grade level. And, and that committee then will develop a mission statement. Uh, we will, they will review current curriculum. They will articulate between grade levels or cont uh, um, content areas based on if you're in the high school, you're uh, they're going to re be reviewing the assessments. They're going to re evaluate programs they may want to bring in or textbooks. And they're, then they're presented with the curriculum components, including mandated topics. There are a number of mandated topics that are needed uh, to be, be included in our curriculum. And that includes um, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, topics. Uh, and I just want to review some of the mandates that are out there that are included in our curriculum. Uh, the most recent one is um, a new law that, uh, that beca became a uh, law in March of this year, and it's A4454, which requires schools to include instruction on diversity and inclusion as part of the New Jersey State Learning Standards. Uh, other mandated DEI topics um, are the Amistad, uh, the Amistad uh, Commission, um, the Holocaust Commission, and um, more recently, the SB 1591, which um, mandates instruction must be included about the contributions of LGBT and disabled people. So we have a number of DEI uh, mandates that are included and are taught uh, within our schools. And uh, you can find our curriculums online. Uh, I will be posting this presentation and you can click on that, but it is on our website. So if you are interested in reviewing our curriculum, they are available. Our curriculum um, consists of, of, of several different things. Uh, you have the framework and the content of instruction, and that really discusses what grade level it's happening at, uh, what, what if there are prerequisites to get into that class. Uh, it will include components of the curriculum, course title, department mission statement, the individual course description, and the units. The units are really the, the thick of the curriculum. That's what is being taught and the different components of how it's being taught. So within the units, you're gonna see the unit title, uh, time allotted to teach that unit, uh, corresponding state standards. Uh, you're gonna see the essential questions. The essential questions are the big overlapping questions that you want students to really delve into and, and reflect on. Um, it, it's those questions that there are not, there are no simple answers. Um, and part of coming up with those 
uh, responds to the, the, those essential questions is making sure that students are, are fulfilling the learning objectives. There are uh, possible student activities included in each unit, resources, materials, 21st century life uh, and, and career, uh, technology standards. As I mentioned earlier, we, d we uh, a couple years ago started including uh, diversity inclusion as a separate section within each unit. Um, the assessments are included and possible modifications uh, based on the different types of learners that might be in the classroom. So there's a lot of different components that make up the curriculum. Uh, the, st the, uh, the staff members will work throughout the school year meeting, uh, reviewing and revising. And then uh, at, during the summer months, individuals are, are chosen to write the curriculums for the grade levels. Those curriculums are then reviewed by the principals, by the director of uh, curriculum and myself, and once accepted, that they are uh, um, approved by the Board of Education. So when there are changes, it goes through a process. And, and um, at times, we, we do need to change curriculum or revise it based on state standards. Sometimes it's based on the content we're providing, or as, as I mentioned earlier, because we've developed a new course, and we need to get that course approved by the Board of Ed. So that's, in a nutshell, how our curriculum works. I want to give you a quick update on strategic planning. Uh, strategic planning, we had our second session on November t uh, 10th, the, uh, last week. Uh, and we really started, the group started working on an introduction to data. So we started reviewing some of the data that's available um, for us to uh, consider when we're looking to make decisions based on uh, our strategic plan. Uh, we continue to work on value statements, and we are close to finalizing the mission statement. So uh, we saw a lot of progress in that last session. Uh, in the month of December, we have two sessions scheduled. Altogether, there, are, uh, there will be six sessions. So the core team is moving forward. Uh, it's been, uh, for the first two sessions, a, a very um, positive experience for the members, and I, we're seeing progress, so we're very happy about that. And this time of year is uh, we start our budget process for the 22-23 uh, school year. Um, our budget ca uh, calendar is located on the website, but two important dates that uh, I want the public to be aware of. The first is on March 14th, we do uh, present the tentative budget. It's reviewed and adopted at the board by the board at that meeting. And then on April 25th, there's a public hearing to adopt the final budget. We will be publishing um, the budget presentation, the final budget presentation, prior to that meeting the previous week in order for the public to have enough time to review the final budget. And if they have questions or concerns, they can certainly reach out to the Board of Ed or attend this meeting to express those questions or concerns. And lastly, just some upcoming events. Um, we have uh, this week, there's a grace meeting on Wednesday night and next week it's a short week because of, of the th uh, Thanksgiving holiday we have an early dismissal on the 24th we are closed the 25th and 26th and I do want to mention uh, the Thanksgiving race the Ashenfelter 8k and the Tom Fleming mile is back on this year so on uh, Thanksgiving morning the it will be very busy in town hopefully um, the, the high school will be set up for the runners and the race will be taking place and we're very excited about that and I, I thank uh, Dan Murphy and the Education Foundation for putting in so much work to make sure that happens. Um, before I hand the program actually over to uh, Mr. DeWitt who's going to uh, present the student safety data system report, I just want to ask the board if they have any questions on Heather. Can you elaborate on the data that the strategic planning committee was looking at, just an example? Um, so so it, w it was just an introduction. We started looking at uh, where we could find the data. So we went through some curriculum. We went through some uh, school performance reports, um, some assessment data th through that. Uh, we haven't delved into um, the, the data as much as we will be. It was just an introduction to that process. Other questions? Dirk, can you just, for those who um, 
don't know, can you uh, distinguish between standards, curriculum, and instruction? So, so standards are, are coming typically from the state uh, level, uh, New Jersey State Learning Standards. It, they may be coming from uh, um, the federal level when you have uh, state standards. Let's say the New Jersey Council of Mathematics, they're, they're developing standards. Um, typically, the, the federal standards and state standards are aligning. Uh, those are the topics that, uh, are that need to be taught um, in the classroom. Instruction is how the teacher goes about teaching those uh, topics. And then uh, the third assessment. Uh, curriculum. Oh, oh. You, so, you so when you have the standards, then uh, you, you develop the curriculum based on the standards. And that's more of a detail of how you ap approach it. It's an overall, you know, you have the standards, the objectives, the goals, uh, the materials. And, and uh, as, I, as I showed you, each unit is consisting of, of a lot of different components. And they're all coming together in order to form uh, the plans for the, for the unit, and those are broken down to individual lesson plans that the teachers will develop for each class. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on from the board? Okay. Um, Mr. DeWitt, sorry. Thank you so much. I'm trying to talk through the basket. Uh, I'm here to present the student safety data system, the um, summary of harassment, intimidation, or bullying, investigations, trainings, and programs, including the report of violence and vandalism. This is reported out twice a year and presented to at a board of ed meeting. We're presenting reporting period two, which was from January 1st through June 30th of this year. The previous reporting period, which was the six months prior, was already reported out. That was posted on the website, and this will also be posted tomorrow. The student, the student safety data system um, combines the two previous systems. There was an electronic violence and vandalism report, which was called the Evers system and also a HIV investigations training and program system. As you'll see on the next chart, um, these are the different columns that will be presented. There's an incident total which occurs. We have to report out if there's any incidents of violence, vandalism, substance, weapons, and HIB confirmed. That will be on our incident total. Then there's also incidents of violence, the definition of that being anything that's assault, fighting, kidnapping, robbery, extortion, et cetera. Also vandalism, which is arson, computer, computer trespass, damage to property, and those other things. There's also another column that's added on there, which is other incidents leading to removal. And that's any incident that does not meet either violence, vandalism, one of the other areas, but results in disciplinary removal for at least half a day. So if there's something that occurs and they need to remove the student and it's reported, we have to report that out. You'll notice that there's an incident category. The totals may differ. Something could be considered under multiple offenses, but it could only be one incident. So if something happened and it was multiple, that's why the numbers would be different. So this is reporting period one. This was actually presented already. It was previously reported at a board meeting last year, or last school year. And uh, this includes what had occurred over July 1st through December 30th. You'll notice that there, the incident total column, let's figure out how to, oh, there we go. Incident total column, which is the first one, includes those violence, vandalism, substance, weapons, and anything that was an HIV that was actually confirmed, and that comes in our first column. And the two additional columns are any incidents, as I mentioned, that led to a removal, 
And then if there's any HIV incidents in investigation that occurred, and it was alleged but not found to be substantiated, that also is reported out. So for period one of last school year, there was a total of one incident, and there was also an incident leading to removal and one HIV that was alleged. This is reporting period two. So this was from January 1st through June 30th. It's the same chart and you'll, you'll notice that the incident total for this year included, the second part, included three incidents at Glenridge High School, including vandalism, a substance abuse, and one HIV confirmed. Also reported out is the incidents and what the nature was. So the incidents that had occurred specifically the incident that had occurred for the second reporting period was um, that was found to be HIV was an electronic communication. It was found to be intentional. And the nature of bullying, there were several areas. You'll notice that both the incidents that occurred, they were electronic communications last year. Um, we don't list out what the actions that were taken, being that there is a small number of students, that information could, that confidential information could lead to determining who it was, so we don't release that information. But last year, there was two confirmed HIVs. That doesn't mean these are the only two things that occurred last year. That means these were the only two things that were actually found to be HIV. There could have been code of conduct issues that happened throughout the year, but they did not meet the criteria. We also report out the trainings and programs that occur. So each building principal, the administration in the building, will find trainings and programs for their staff, for the students. So here's a summary of, for each of the schools, the actual trainings that they had provided and or, and or programs, and then the total for the district. And I just included all of them up there to get an idea of what did it look like for this year, or last year rather, how many were there. There was a total of 77 trainings and 67 programs that occurred across the district last year. Um, I looked back to see the data because I was just curious what this looked like in comparison to other years. It was similar to about two years prior to that. Obviously, the year before being a little different with us being on COVID and being out and things like that, the numbers were a little bit different. Here's some examples of trainings that, or programs rather, that are occur at each of the buildings. Uh, they're kind of randomly picked in, but uh, upstanders at Ridgewood Avenue happens to be one. Mr. Phillips had recognized the two students, but these are some of the other things that occur at the buildings that make up the 77 and 67 different trainings and programs that have happened across the year. These are the staff members that are involved in each of the buildings, and this was for the 2020-21 school year. These are the anti-bullying specialists by building, and then the administrators who will also be or may be involved in the investigation. These have changed this year, obviously, with Dr. Harris moving to the building, this O'Donnell Pickert coming in, and we had our school psychologist who's new, also trained to be an anti-bullying specialist at one of the lower buildings. And that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Board members, do you have any questions for Mr. DeWitt before we go to public comment? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. DeWitt, for that. Uh, we're now at the first public comment period for comments on agenda items only. Do you see it on the agenda? Um, whether we've just talked about it, for example, the violence and vandalism and bullying report, or whether it's on your agenda, um, that is, uh, you can certainly ask about it. We have a few protocols. Uh, each person, if you have a question or comment, should come to the lectern. Uh, so I believe there's a sign-in sheet. Uh, give us your name and confirm your Glenridge residency. If you have more than one question or comment, please uh, give them to us all at once so that we can try to answer them in the order that you've given them. And everyone has two minutes. I will be timing it on the stopwatch feature of my uh, phone, and I will uh, tell you when your two minutes time is up. So uh, does anyone have a question or comment? Hi. Uh, Pam DeLuca, 21 Madison Street. Uh, my third child is a junior, Giannina DeLuca, and a member 
of the national championship Glen Ridge Marching Band. <laughs> I'm here to both thank you for acknowledging their amazing accomplishment this year. They put in uncountless hours, countless hours, not uncountless, countless hours of work and practice six days a week to ensure perfection on the field, both at home games and in competition. So thank you all for recognizing them and thank you all for the standing ovation at the end. My second point about the Glen Ridge Marching Band actually falls very much in line with the conversation around DEI in the district of Glen Ridge. If there is not a better example of diversity and inclusion in a group of students than the Glen Ridge Marching Band, I would challenge anybody to find one. You have freshmen to seniors, and each member of that band is as important as the other. They represent a number of nationalities, a number of religions, a number of co skin color, and a large group of LGBTQIA students. And they get along, they meet every week, they sit in circles to celebrate their competitions at, at the end of each Saturday, they play games together, they respect one another. And I just want them to be a leading example of what we can all be in Glen Ridge. Thank you. Thanks so much. Next person, please. Will be your name. Uh, Wendy Sheps, uh, 60 Forest Avenue. Um, I have uh, I have twins. They're in their senior year of the high school. Um, it, did get mentioned before regarding the change in the bell schedule. Um, the shortened lunch period, I don't believe was particularly successful today. Um, my children have been leaving school uh, in the time of COVID, taking off masks, sitting in a large group for lunch. This seems very concerning and I would appreciate it if the board could address that. Thank you. Um, was that all? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, we did also receive an email about that, and um, Mr. Phillips, would you like to address that? For sure. I, I know there's con concerns as the weather's changing about being able to get the students outside in, in a safe and um, uh, uh, environment that, that's proper uh, at that time. Um, uh, Mr. Lawler and I have spoken about that. Um, part of transitioning over to a new bell schedule, and this happened last year, when we were changing bell schedules due to the COVID, that there's gonna be an adjustment period. We will look at that. I will I plan on meeting with Mr. Lawler um, um, about the situation, and I will come in and monitor this week during the lunches to see how it's going. Okay, just my only point is that with the seniors particularly being able to drive, they were leaving, and now they can't. So. Uh, well, I, I will say I have a long <laughs> history in this building, and I know um, Prior to pandemic, this was the, the schedule that w we had, and seniors continued to leave during this time. So I, I will speak about the past a little bit. Um, uh, a lot of seniors I know try to work their schedule so they have a double lunch. But ag this again, I will speak to M Mr. Lawler about the concerns that I'm here. Okay, thank to you. To be You're continued. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Good evening. Uh, Alex Beavis, uh, 28 Appleton Road in Glen Ridge. I have uh, two children at uh, Ridgewood. <coughs> Excuse me. First, I'd like to say thank you to Superintendent Phillips and the entire Board of Education for all you've done to keep our children in school and safe throughout this pandemic. Speaking of safety, I'd also like to applaud your efforts when it comes to the DEI initiative. When children feel included, they feel safe. When they are taught all deserve equity in their community and beyond, no matter their race, religion, or sexual orientation, they feel safe. I'm confident every parent in this room wants to keep their child safe, not just physically safe, but emotionally as well. 
and this study can help identify those possible gaps. It's easy for us to focus on what divides us. However, we are here to show support for what I know unites us, and that's our children. I believe part of why this DEI study was initiated by the Board of Education is to ask ourselves, how can we do better? Let's show our children we can do better. Let's embrace the true meaning of diversity and inclusion by listening to each other and by letting the recommendations be presented when the time comes. I thank you again for your work and I look forward to those recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yes. Hello, I'm Nadia Melliker. I'm at 27 Appleton Road. And um, I just wanted to say again, also I support the, B B the Board of Education Diversity Initiatives this year. Thank you for the, for the information about the curriculum completely in support of um, changing the curriculum as needed because, I mean, that's the main reason we moved to this community. We expect our children to have an excellent education. In this day and age, that means that children need to understand points of view beyond what they see day to day. It means having teachers who are trained on how to have conversations about race and gender. It means having administra administrators who are knowledgeable and empowered to confront uncomfortable situations as they arise. It means having books, having, it means book selections in English class should be current. It means changing the curriculum as needed to prepare our children for success in college and beyond. The Board of Administrators role and the administration's role is to deliver an outstanding education system that is current and competitive with the rest of the country and the world. And consideration, part of the consideration of that Consideration of diversity is part of that. You, the Board of Ad Administration, and the Board of Education and Administration are charged with nurturing future leaders and thinkers. You can only create leaders and thinkers if the students are encouraged to look beyond the borders of their homes and beyond the borders of their towns. An educated student needs to consider the big, beautiful, complex world out there. Thank you for your hard work to manage the change necessary to keep Glen Ridge as a school district to be inspired by. Thank you. Nicole Qualis, 18 Edgewood Road. I have a seventh grader and a recent high school graduate. I am also one of the founding members of the GRBDIA. So I wanna also extend a thank you to the Board of Ed. Our conversations go back before we officially formed and um, the Board of Ed has always been open to uh, listening and uh, sharing dialogue in regards to the DEI. Uh, I also wanna share that I sit on the board of, uh, or I sit, I work with in my corporate space also DEI efforts and what we are sharing or what is uh, in the agenda and on, on the table really goes beyond our kids' front doors and even their classrooms. This will follow them for the rest of their lives. So really being able to come together, I think it was already shared, you know, having this open dialogue to show that they can lead and go into the world to be respectful. Uh, also having, uh, as we mentioned, Glen Ridge's ex excellent education system, along with excellent character as they continue to see the world beyond Glen Ridge. So I just wanna thank the Board of Ed again. I wanna thank everyone's comments um, from even uh, the last meeting because I think this opens up the door for healthy communication, which is what we all want to see. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name Hi. is Quinn Wong. I live at 122 Essex Ave and I have two children in far, uh, at Forest Ave School. So like many of new, many new residents in this town, my husband and I moved here because of the reputable, reputable public school system. I'm here tonight to show my support um, of the BO, BOE's DEI initiatives. It was very disheartening and upsetting to listen to the narrative and opinions of some residents last month opposing these initiatives. It was even more upsetting when my kindergartner came home and asked me 
what it means when his classmates say to him, Chinese people look like this, and proceed to pulling their eyes to the side, mimicking what they believe um, as all how all Chinese people look. Like the majority of us, many will not openly admit that we have participated in acts of discrimination, microaggressions, or biases, whether or not these are conscious or subconscious. Um, we all have room for improvement in being more self-aware, accepting, and inclusive of others who come from different race, ethnicity, culture, religion, sexual orientation. I will admit that myself, I can do better in this area, and we can all benefit from DEI initiatives in our workplace, community, and our schools. I fully support the Glen Ridge Board of Ed's DEI initiatives, and I want you to thank you all for taking the first steps in ensuring that our children are in an environment that fosters diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christina Lynn Elliott. I live at 72 Forest. I have two young kids at Forest Avenue School. Um, thanks, Quinn, for speaking up. My kids have also had similar experiences just recently. That's why I'm here today, so I wanted to voice my support for the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. As someone who's gone through discrimination and is now seeing my kids go through bias, um, I'm hopeful for a day where my kids don't have to go through that. And I would have loved a Board of Education to go through the DEI audit and efforts. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I really support it and I look forward to the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is John Militello, and I live at 7 Ferncliffe Terrace here in Glen Ridge, and I have an eighth grader and a fifth grader. Thank you so much for keeping the school open during the pandemic. You guys did it safely. You guys were flexible and accommodating to different comfort levels of parents and students, and I thank you for that, and so does my family. Uh, I'm the product of a multicultural marriage. My dad's Italian, my mom's Mexican. I know I don't look Hispanic. So sometimes I know, and I've been subject to, when majority of people don't know, say awful things about people, a minority, and Mexicans and others. I've heard some people say some pretty awful things in my life growing up, and sometimes I've stood up against it, and sometimes I haven't. And growing up in a small town in Michigan, I know firsthand what it's like living in a community and going to school where your heritage is not included or taken to, into account, and there are no teachers that look like you. We enrich all of our students by realizing the heritage, the intent, and the intent, the historical intent of our country and its immigrant background. Um, I know self-reflection is never easy, so thank you guys for doing that. At time, I've had to take pause myself, like many others. Um, and so this effort on diversity is much appreciated. Um, I do believe this, I do not believe this effort is meant to indict anyone, like some people have said. Instead, it provides more of a teaching moment for students, teachers, and parents. Uh, you guys have been transparent, you've been forthcoming with your data, your rationale. I hope that continues, and like many others here tonight, I expect to see continued progress on this. Thank you again for all the hard work you guys do. Thank you. My name is Ian O'Brien, and I live at 25 Clark Street. And my son is a first grader at Central School. And I wanted to come up here to thank the board and administration and the educators for investing in this diversity and inclusion program in not just education, but as well as in hiring practices. Um, obviously, I'm black. And having grown up um, several decades ago, uh, I have been faced with multiple levels of discrimination throughout my many levels of education, but yet you continue and you just grow and you do what you need to. I would have loved, as the previous commenter had said, uh, to have had a board of education that cared about such things, but at the time it wasn't important because that's just, that's just how people were. And you take that for granted. 
and you know people just say things but it definitely has an effect on our children and while my son does not look like me because he comes from a multicultural family as well I want him to be able to see a very diverse scope of authors illustrators um, other artists mathematicians doctors astronauts in history and potential for him in the future as well and for his friends so I applaud your efforts and thank you very much for continuing to look into these initiatives and I can't wait to see the recommendations thank you thank you My name is Leanne Tullison. Um, I emailed you before. Yes. Um, I live at 10 Wildwood Terrace. And I just wanted to thank you for your efforts and tell you how much I support all of the efforts regarding DEI um, in our schools. And um, I just want to say that our kids deserve to have an honest look at our history. And they deserve to see um, perspectives from people that don't look like them. So again, I just wanted to thank you, let you know how much I support these efforts, and to thank you for all of your efforts in keeping us safe um, with COVID. Thank you. Julie Coe, I have um, two seniors and a recent graduate. I'm at 33 Snowden Place in Glen Ridge, um, obviously. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you and show my support for the um, DEI initiative in the schools. Um, really, when I was watching the video of the last meeting, I, I couldn't believe the comments that I heard um, professing you know, that there's absolutely no racism in Glen Ridge or a comment that um, the Olive Branch Report is recommending the teaching of CRT, um, because both are not true. Um, both show total ignorance, and they both are dangerous. Um, the Olive Branch Report doesn't suggest you know, teaching CRT. If you read the report, you, it clearly does not say anything about that. Um, it does talk, however, about um, Glenridge um, students um, you know, trying to make parents comfortable, students comfortable through um, new hiring practices, minor changes in the curriculum, and increased um, communication to the community. So what we should be concerned about based on that report is that our students don't feel comfortable discussing certain topics in, in classes because they're not taught the proper tools on how to be respectful and say things respectfully or that students um, feel that when other students make comments, they're not aware of how hurtful they are, or that uh, parents don't feel well informed regarding the DEA initiatives. So those are all directly from the report. Um, so I do believe that Glenridge does have work to do, and I am very thankful um, that the public school is willing to make these changes you know, to prepare our students for the world outside of Glen Ridge, um, because it's a very diverse world, and people who embrace that diversity will be productive citizens in it. Thank you. Thank you. Walsh, Mayola Academy, Glen Ridge resident, uh, daughter in grade 10. Just wanted to add my support, um, voice my support for the DEI initiatives that you're undertaking, and I uh, wish you all the best of luck with those things. And that's all. Thank you. I'm Shannon Rivero. Uh, I live at 18 Douglas Road. 
I just moved here uh, right before the school year started, and um, I'm really uh, super psyched to be a part of this community. I have two kids here at Glen Ridge High School, and um, we came from a charter school previously in Jersey City, um, the Ethical Community Charter School. It was based on ethics. Um, so I had a lot of good feelings coming here. Um, I was really disturbed by a lot of the comments um, at the last meeting um, against the DEI initiative. Um, it it kind of broke my heart because uh, ultimately we all have children, pretty much I'm assuming, and we all think uh, kids should be safe, I think. I think we all can agree that every kid should feel safe and should feel like um, the people around them have their back and that they can um, be heard and listened to. And um, if we don't have that in the school system and in our community, then it's a really sad day. And um, we all have different life experiences. And like someone before me said, it's really important to hear from everyone else and um, hear what their life is like, because uh, we're all different. And um, it's, it's just, I, I just, I'm really impressed with the school system and I'm thankful that you guys um, are working hard to make sure everyone feels um, that they're heard and, uh, and understood. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Lita Moloff. I live at 12 Windsor Place. I have two kids in the Glen Ridge School System and I'm here to also lend my support for the diversity, equity and inclusion work that the Board of Education is doing. I think as a community and as a school system, our task is to develop future leaders and community members, members of this town and the world beyond all of our doors and that diversity, equity and inclusion education is a central pillar to that education and I support all the work that the board is doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, uh, James Gordon, uh, 42 Hillside Avenue. I have two kids at Ridgewood. Um, I'll keep this brief. I just want to give you a comment in the form of two thank yous. Uh, the first one is thank you for your leadership and your management over the course of the last year and a half uh, during you know the pandemic. Keeping our kids in school, helping educate them was amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, and the other is thank you for continuing to pursue excellence in education. Um, and I also thank you for understanding that the nuance there is that excellent education is evolving education. Uh, and if we're not learning how to teach better, then we're, we're static and we're getting worse. Uh, this initiative and initiatives like it are exactly what we should be doing in the district. And I really appreciate that you guys are taking the work, taking the time to do the work. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sawa. I have two children in the school district. I'll mention that they are uh, Asian, Caucasian, so they're biracial. And uh, one thing that struck me, well, I, I should have said I'm very, very supportive of the DIA, DEI initiatives. And um, I've spoken on this topic even long before this survey was done, so I'm glad it was. But what it bothers me a little tonight is I hear have heard of at least, I think, three incidents of ridiculing Asian children. And I want to know, Mr. Phillips, what are you going to, now you know about these incidents, what are you going to do? There's a, a protocol for looking into this type of thing and taking some kind of it, corrective action. It may just be education, you know, for the participants but you know about them now, so how are you gonna ensure that this just doesn't fall by the wayside? Is that it? 
Yes. Uh, I, uh, I be, I'm planning on following up with the parents and speaking to the principals in those buildings where these incidents happen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Dina Vitani. I have a second grader in at Linden and another one on the way. Uh, I'm here to also support your initiative and I, um, I also want to thank you um, and appreciate that you've upheld the mask mandate which has kept our kids safe. Um, I also have a couple of questions in regards to recommendations from the report. Have any of those been implemented and what is the timeline for the implementation of the recommendations of the books and the change to the curriculum? Thank you. Yeah, uh, as far as far as uh, what's been implemented, um, I, a number of um, initiatives were t taken prior to the final report coming out, and we continue to work on that. Um, last year, we spent a lot of time with our equity committee of educating our staff and, and bringing a lot of concepts to the forefront. Um, we did have some professional trainers come in, working with our staff and with our administrators. Um, uh, when we start looking at the report, I am working with the equity committee to prioritize some of the, uh, of the recommendations. Um, we are, I know, um, I've met with the Home and School Association, which was w part of the report, and we are meeting with members of um, the diversity uh, organizations in town. Um, the communication, I know some of the, the our meetings uh, are trying to be more accessible to all, uh, all individuals in town. Uh, we've had some staff-wide training that has happened this year and will continue to happen. Uh, part of our district professional development includes DEI, um, which as we then look at our individually at our staff members, our teachers who have to create pr um, professional growth plans, uh, there is a district professional growth plan for each instructional uh, staff member. So there's a lot of initiatives that are in play right now that we will continue to look at and. Um, we're going to continue to prioritize and um, some of the actions that's recommended and, and we'll follow up on that probably next month with a report of where we're at and some of the things we've done and some of the things we'd like to accomplish before the end of the year. And I should also say, if you haven't seen it, um, the Diversity Committee's newsletter is available from our, our homepage. So um, and it's, it's beautiful, so take a look. Other uh, questions or comments? Hi, my name is Patrick Preblick. I live at 64 Adams Place. I have a somewhat recent high school graduate and a senior at the high school. And it's just a quick note to say thank you for all the work you do, the volunteers, the people who are uh, being paid, everybody here who is working towards making it a better place. I support the DEI committee, the DEI recommendations by the Olive Branch um, consultants. I, appreciate that you allotted the $25,000 to learn more about other people's experiences besides maybe this white woman's experience of Glen Ridge. I wanna hear from everyone in Glen Ridge, the students, the faculty, the administrators, and the other parents as to their experience. So thank you so much for opening the, our eyes to what is right here in front of us. It's funny, it was shocking to hear some of the things tonight it was shocking to see the recording to the, the last meeting. It was shocking two meetings ago to hear some of the things that are said. And I would like to apologize to any of those of you who were upset or offended by anything that was said. I'm here to tell you that this girl feels like we've got to make some changes and we so appreciate the hard work that you're taking to make those changes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thanks for what you did and continue to do during COVID. I'm so proud to be a part of this community and to be your neighbors and your constituent as a parent of our school children. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else before we move on? I, 
Uh, <coughs> hi, Phil Johnson, 55 Chestnut Hill Place. I have two kids, a senior and a sophomore. Thank you again to the Glen Ridge Board of Education for conducting the equity audit. And while we think, uh, while I think we all agree there are opportunities for additional analyses, it is directionally clear that from the perspectives of non-white parents, as well as parents of children with special needs, we have areas to improve. In written statement accompanying their testimony at the October 25th Board of Education meeting, members of the CDE made the following statement in reference to the equity audit, and I quote, doesn't anyone question that it was only done by women? Doesn't anyone question that it was only done by women? Now, I suppose there are two ways to interpret that statement. Number one, the audit isn't valid because there are three quarters of the responders were women. Therefore, what the audit needed was more men to respond in order to counteract the perspectives of women. I'm pretty sure when the 19th Amendment was passed 100 years ago, Congress didn't require the share of women's votes to be less than that of men. Interpretation number two, since the Olive Branch auditors are female, the mere fact that they are women makes them unqualified to appropriately conduct an equity audit. And the work isn't valid until it is checked by men. This sounds to me like the first half of the movie, Hidden Figures. I'm pretty certain, based on my 20 years of living in Glenridge, that we have an amazing group of intelligent women that don't need someone with a Y chromosome to approve their work or tell them what to think. Instead of refuting the re results of the audit, I would opine that the statements by the CDE confirm that we need to embrace further DEI efforts in our school and in our, in our town. More than 90% of teachers and students, and more than 70% of parents support continued DEI efforts by our schools. I'm thankful for all the teachers that have instructed our kids to prepare them for college and more, more importantly, prepare them for life in the world beyond Glenridge. To keep moving forward, we need to embrace the values of 2021 not 1961 and not 1921. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there is, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Give everyone else a chance to speak because I know you guys have heard from me so many times. Trisha Akinwandi, parent of a seventh grader who's home studying for her science test. She, <laughs> she loves her science teacher and I really hope that he gets to stay. Um, I want to thank you again, Betsy, Dirk, the Board of Ed. I want to thank everybody who came out and to speak today. Um, I know it can be a big challenge with uh, working, you know, being a mom, being a dad, you know, being a member of the community, and you know, it's not always convenient to get to a Board of Ed meeting, but the fact that we had so many people write in, the fact that we had so many people come up and speak, um, I'm just so overwhelmed. So, thank you, Patrick, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, so, Definitely on behalf of me, who um, started the Glen Ridge Diversity and Inclusion Association with um, some other peers, as well as Felice back there, um, who started the PAN, who's one of the founding members of the Pan Asian American Association. We have been meeting and collaborating and figuring out what to do and how can we, you know, make these changes and help the board. But on behalf of us, on behalf of everybody who spoke, I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, and I, it's just so moving that people were, that we are coming together in order to focus on what really needs to be done, and that's improving and continuing on the tradition of excellence in Glen Ridge Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Billy Jo Rivera. I live at 18 Douglas Road, and I'm a student at this school. I just wanted to give some um, insight from somebody who attends the school about things that I've observed. Um, I've heard a shocking amount of seventh graders specifically say um, slurs, and I've heard some shocking statements. So for some people to think that racism, quote unquote, doesn't exist in Glen Ridge is 
very concerning that they're so blinded by what's actually happening and unaware. And I also wanted to talk about um, how important to me it is that people of this generation, younger than me even, are taught about different communities and that the diversity is really, the teaching diversity is, in, in, is enforced because I remember going into sex ed when I was younger, not having been taught about LGBTQ plus um, like things in that class, not being taught that um, queer people <laughs> can be sexual, not being taught about transgender individuals, not being taught about intersex individuals. And it's very important to me that, p that these children understand what it's like for many people that have to deal with the discrimination they deal with. And like I even have teachers and I have friends that are transgender that get misgendered every day at school by teachers, by students, and how unaware most teachers probably are that how harmful it is, how it puts a red flag on every student that's, mis that's misgendered, that they are now a target for bullying and other harassment. So that's just all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming forward. Anyone else? We do have a second public comment period at the end of the meeting. Um, I do understand that if some of you, again, have other obligations, um, we, we have some business that we have to do, necessary board business, but you're certainly, we welcome everyone to stay, and if you have something additional to say, um, you get a second chance at the end of the meeting. Okay, board members, uh, you have in your packets some minutes from the last meeting. Uh, we have, uh, I should say, if you're following on your agendas, um, the board made a mutual decision tonight since we have so many guests here with us that we would uh, postpone our committee and liaison reports until the December uh, meeting. Uh, but board members, do you have anything uh, that is uh, time sensitive? No? Okay. Uh, then let's go on to the minutes of the October 25th meeting, executive and regular session. Uh, does anyone have any changes to those minutes? All right, um, Michael, would you move the minutes, please? I'll move M1. May I have a second? Second. Second from David. Uh, since there are no changes, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet. Aye. Ms. Boya Volucci. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Before we go on to the administrative items, you'll note that A2 is the Glenridge Board of Education goals for the 21-22 school year. These are something we do, we do goals every year we will also shortly be doing district goals, uh, we, uh, but I wanted to just go over them uh, because uh, the discussion tonight certainly, um, certainly uh, coincides with these goals. So the first one, use BOE meetings to provide enhanced updates regarding board committee work. Uh, the board has a number of standing committees we report out on a monthly basis and we want to make those um, more clear, more um, illustrative of what the board's committees uh, do. Uh, oversee the outcome of the equity and special education audits and ensure the communication of outcomes and next steps to the school community, uh, just as you've suggested to us tonight. Uh, participate in and review the outcome of the district strategic planning initiative and ensure the clear communication to the school community of the outcomes and next steps of that strategic planning. And finally, to provide a platform for positive district news and the recognition of student and staff accomplishments. I think you saw that tonight. I do wish they could be here every week, but we have a whole lot of other students and faculty with wonderful accomplishments. We want people to know about them. We've all come through COVID. We all need some good news. Um, we think this is the best way of delivering that news. So those are our goals for this year. And now, uh, David, would you move the administrative items? I move a one through eight, three. Okay, may I have a second? Second. Second from Michael. Any discussion from the board? No? All 
All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyavolucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carried. All right, you have personnel items. Uh, next on the agenda, Tracy, would you move the personnel items? Yes, I move P1 through P9, which includes additions on the addendum to items uh, 1, 5, and 8. All right, may I have a second? Second. Second from Teresa. Uh, personnel items, because of their confidential nature, are handled in exec session. Uh, you will note that um, we, according to the contract, we provide stipends to our faculty for extra duty. So many of these personnel items are reflective of those stipends. Also, there are some personnel changes um, which are somewhat reflective of the volatility of the personnel market right now. Uh, teachers of every kind are in very short supply. Uh, with that, uh, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyavolucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. All right, business items. David, would you move the business items? I move B1 through B5. May I have a second? I'll second. Second. Uh, all, all right, uh, any discussion, board members, on any of the business items? No? All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyavolucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Now, we've come to the second public comment period for comments or questions on agenda or other items relative to the operation of our schools. Does anyone have additional uh, comments or questions? Hello, uh, my name is Jerry Melliker. I live at 27 Appleton Road, and I have two children currently in the school system. Uh, I just wanna say how awesome it is to be here tonight with so many friends and neighbors uh, speaking out in support of the DE&I initiatives um, and bringing inclusion into our school. Uh, and being open to diverse perspectives has personally benefited me through unique professional opportunities, rich personal experiences, and lifelong friendships. For me, embracing diversity also means providing all students with role models who look like them and share their cultural experiences. Diversity is not a curriculum, it is a community. Diversity cannot be taught, it must be experienced. Diversity is not telling our children what to believe, it is showing them new ways to listen. Several of the teachers that had the biggest impact on my education looked very different from me and brought fresh perspective to their disciplines and they impact me still today. The diversity of my children's neighbors and friends should be reflected in their school staff, teachers, and administrators. Following the recommendations in the Olive Branch Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Report, I look forward to hearing more specifics on how Glen Ridge Public Schools can attract and retain a talented and more diverse staff and further commit to delivering opportunity, success, and fulfillment for all of our children. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, uh, my name is Ryan Doyle. I'm a resident here. Uh, new resident in the last couple of years. I have two young learners in my family that recently started or will soon start their Glen Ridge education. First B of E meeting. Uh, Made it very easy <laughs> after watching the last two, so thanks everyone. Uh, thanks Mr. Phillips, Ms. Ginsburg. Uh, in even the best times is a thankless job, so, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Ms. O'Neill, Mr. Bonnet, Mr. Campbell, congrats on your recent re-election, and to the rest of the board, thank you for your service. Um, I, I know it's your job to act as a therapist and outlet for parents 
uh, I just wanted to call out that la last time there, there were definitely a few remarks directed at you, just nasty. So I, I, you know, I apologize for that, and, and thank you again for your time. Um, I want to talk about my support for DEI, um, some of the rel relevant stats about the town uh, from the equity audit. We're a small town, 7,500 people. There's 2,400 households here. Uh, there's 1,900 students. Most of us have kids here in, in, in the district um, or, or, or have them. Uh, there's 76% white. The national average is 60%. Um, our, our ethnicity is, is, is lower than the national average, usually mixed race 7%, Hispanic 7%, black 4%. Most of those are under the national average. Um, we also have 5% people in poverty. So it's very important that when people are talking about this DEI, and i they're not just thinking about race. That, that, that definitely took over the conversations the last couple of meetings. Um, but it's, it's race, it's gender, it's sexuality, it, it's, it's family construct. Um, you know, multiple parents uh, around single parents, uh, two parents of the same genders, or, you know, ev everything. It, there, there's such a wide net that the focus on any of those individual topics, it, it, it's, 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 it's not just one thing. Um, so I'm glad, and, and this, this composite of everyone speaking today really shows that. Um, we got a great turnout on the survey results. I, I know people want to dismiss 475 parents filling that out, that's about 25%, and that's actually pretty good for survey response. Um, and, and most of those parents have been here for four more years. Uh, I know there's a bunch of parents that have only been here for a couple of years, like myself too, that, that didn't fill it out because their kids are just too young, but are, are definitely in support of it. We came out here for reasons like that. Um, I, I saw on Zillow 650 houses uh, in Glenridge have sold since late 2018. Uh, I'd have to think that it's everyone with two and four year olds, or, um, just, at least <laughs> from, from, the, from, from the playground that I see. Uh, I know um, there's a few that moved over here in high school. So, so You're so, at so your two minutes. Awesome. So keep it up, guys. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Anyone else? Greta Sawa, I just want to say that I was so touched by the speaker at the end of the last um, public comment period. Um, and what that individual drove home to me, um, which also goes along with my previous comments, where they said that, um, you know, the slurs they had heard even from seventh graders is, as much as our intent is good, we still have an awful lot of work to do. It's still going on. And I really look forward to hearing changes because if we don't change, we're gonna keep getting the same result. So I look forward to hearing from the board what they're gonna be doing differently so that individuals don't have to get up and report things that may have happened to them in school within the last week. Second of all, um, I personally am so pleased to see the great turnout in the audience. I just want to encourage people. I know it's not always easy, especially as the weather's getting colder. and um, It's not easy, but coming in person and being able to speak directly with the board about your concern and seeing um, you know, the exchanges week after week after week makes a huge difference. And it's so important that the board hear uh, what the community has to say in a, um, in a verbal manner rather than passively watching uh, on YouTube. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tricia Snyder. I live at 170 Hawthorne Ave. I have a senior and an eighth grader. And um, I wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, I can only imagine how hard it's been the last few years. Um, I strongly support the DEI initiative, and I want to echo everything that Patrick said. Um, I also just want to mention, since someone else mentioned some stats, that by doing this DEI initiative, we could possibly increase our school rankings because 10 to 40% of school rankings are based on diversity and inclusion. Um, and that's the fastest and best way to actually increase our school rankings. There was also just an article in the Wall Street Journal about people wanting to move to towns that have more diversity. So not only that, it will increase our property values. So I look greatly um, to hearing about your, your recommendations. So thank you very much. Thank you. And 
Okay. And anyone who neglected to sign in can always do it at the end too, not to worry. Hi, my name is Erica Spade. I live at 34 Edgewood Road. Um, last week, I received an email from the listserv for Central School where my son is a kindergarten student. It read, Dear Central Families, incorporating diversity, equity, and inclusion lessons and activities has been a focus this year for our school district and for us here at Central School. Children's literature drives our lessons to help increase cultural awareness and provide a culturally responsive educational experience for the students and staff. We want to involve you in the learning process by sharing the many cultural heritages that make up the Central School community. To help us recognize the rich heritage of all students in our school, would you be willing to make a short presentation about a holiday or share a cultural activity with your child's class? Please let me know and take a moment to complete this brief questionnaire. The letter was signed by Dr. Harris and the questionnaire goes on to ask about each family's cultural holiday traditions. My understanding of CRT or critical race theory is that it is a theoretical framework through which legal scholars attempt to understand racism, intended or otherwise, embedded in particular laws and government policies. The definition seems to have evolved to recently include texts that examine race, many of which cite the original authors of CRT. So this connection isn't unwarranted. What it has to do with teaching kindergartners about Diwali, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I think the approach that the schools are taking is a really positive one. Is there more work to do? Of course, there always will be. But um, I think my ask of you, the board, is to provide some definitions so that we're at least all speaking together from the same resources. I think that will help make the conversation moving forward involving all community, community members uh, a lot less divisive and a lot more productive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Hi, my name is Ellen Stein. I live at 198 Thomas Street. I have two kids. One is in the middle school, one's in the high school. Now, I know if I didn't speak out, I'd regret it. Um, I was really deeply disturbed over the last couple of meetings and tried to organize and spoke to some of you individually. And um, I wanted to speak as a white person and thank all of the folks, all of them here for coming out. I appreciate all the points of view um, and I'm really grateful that the town is willing to have difficult dialogues. They're important for excellence. Um, I also want to put on my professional hat. Um, I'm a psychologist and I run a career center for a university that's very diverse group in Manhattan. And I want to piggyback off of what um, my colleague over there said, that diversity, it's not going away. And if we are not teaching all of our students of every background and in the widest scope of what we would define diversity, how to coexist with each other, how to learn with each other, what diversity means in its widest array. We're not doing our students justice. I know that the employers that come to look for students at the school I work at, they want to know that the students can work across cultures. They want to know that the students are embracing, regardless of what their skin color is. They want to know that the future leaders have the competencies. And I'm just really grateful and, and heartened again to see so many people, neighbors and colleagues and people I hope to get to know, um, coming out in support of this. So please keep up the good work. I know it's been awfully hard to be in education the last couple of years. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much and excited to see where things go. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, um, that being the case, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Moved. Second. May, oh, so, uh, was that a second, Michael? That was a resounding second from Michael. <laughs> I wanna thank you all for taking the time to come out tonight. Thank you so much.